What is happening, YouTube? Today was a much better night for me compared to last night. No, this is not a Clipper video, but this is pretty much a video pretty much for my favorite player of the 2023 NBA Draft, um, Gregory Jackson Jr., um, or Gregory Jackson II. This man... I really vouch for this man. I, I've always talked about this man every time, just when I would make a clip video, and, I, and, and then I would always just include uh, Gigi Jackson on a side note on, like, let's just say when I refer on who the Clippers could get to help the team, I always uh, talked about how, hey, that's why I got, like, Gigi Jackson could help the team a lot, and this is the guy I've been talking about since, I would say, back in, like, February or even as early as January. Um, around December and January, that's when I started, like, okay, I'll give, like, a more proper timeline, so, I knew about Gigi Jackson since last year, back in July, I believe, I want to say July, um, he was projected to be, like, a very top pick, he reclassified to become in the 2023 NBA draft, he could have went 2024, he could have easily been a deck and says since number one pick, but he chose to pull in, in the money Bates, reclassified to the 2023 NBA draft, um, I thought he was going to be like a top five pick, but I I also sensed the chance that he could have, he would probably fall, and then my, and then looks like my, my other, my second prediction that he's probably going to fall because how loaded the class is and how young he is, um, he started falling. It started. He started like slowly dropped to like you know maybe like a mid first round pick. So I was like, hey, you know Clippers could trade up for him. But then, um, uh, and that was like around like February and March. That's when he really started to fall around the Clippers range. But then he kept dropping, 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 dropping because he had some off games. So he kept falling down and he fell to like the second round pick, and then. Like, well, first, it was starting to be, like, a projected late first-round pick. And then I wanted the Clippers to get him. I was pushing for this man to be a Clipper uniform so bad. And then on on June, I, I, I believe it was June 22, I was so, like, I was so hyped. I was hoping this man was wearing a Clipper uniform. I was mad at the Brogdon trade because it would have decreased the chance that the Clippers to select him. And then when when I feel like the Brogdon trade was canceled, I was happy because you know then there's a chance the Clippers getting this man, um, you know revived. But then on draft night, on pick thirtieth, when the Clippers did not when the Clippers selected Kobe Brown over Gigi Jackson, I was irate. I was fuming, and I was very mad. And then and then now watching this game, you know. I'm glad that the G League is starting. I'm definitely going to be watching a lot of like G League games. Or honestly, expect to see some Memphis Grizzlies content come up soon. Because I'm honestly now a part-time Memphis Grizzlies fan. Like, my second team, or my, I should say my other team, honestly, um, I w is going to be where Gigi, Gigi Jackson goes. I've been a fan of this guy since South Carolina. And this, this man is going to be special. Same age as me. He's going to be a star. I mean, by year three. Year three, you're going to see this, his name in an all-star selection. Um, but, yeah, going back to when the Clippers passed up Gigi Jackson, I felt like it, it felt like a betrayal. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't mind when your team, but let me when my team would, like, lose and all that. Like, it sucks to lose, but... In the day, it's part of the game. But when when my favorite team would make the moves that I hate, that's when it just feels like you got I got stabbed in the back. You know what I'm saying? But that's just my opinion. But anyways, let me try to let me just try to talk about the game in general. Um, it had it was a pretty good game. Um, the Memphis Hustles kind of got dominated throughout the whole entire game, but then it, they kind of like tried to gain momentum, but then. Um, unfortunately, the Memphis, uh, hustled, they lost to the Vipers. The Vipers, they got a lot, they got some, good, they got, like, a, a, a really good player. Um, let me talk about, um, the Memphis Hustle Spurs. Cam Whitmore. Cam Whitmore, he's a beast. 25 points, 
three steals, six rebounds, three assists. He was another player that was supposed to be a consensus, like a top five, top eight pick. He fell to like, um, I believe, pick 19, I want to say. I think it was pick 19 or pick 20, if I don't remember. But that was the Clippers pick. The Clippers could have had Cam Whitmore, but they decided to trade for Eric Gordon, which was the worst trade of all time. And shout out to the, the uh, Houston Rockets for fleecing the Lawrence Frank. Um, Cam Whitmore, he's hooping. He's hooping. You know, played pretty good defense. His threes was solid, slashing. He sent to the G League because it's kind of hard to give him some reps. You got guys like Jalen Green in front of him, Dylan Brooks. Um, but one of those games, it's just be- it's just better to like plug Cam Whitmore in the rotations because he's a baller. And honestly, if I was a, a Houston Rockets fan, fan, I would not have liked the Cam. I mean, not the Cam. I meant the Dylan Brooks signing because it would have took minutes from Cam Whitmore. But Dylan Brooks is playing good, so I guess it worked out pretty well. Um, I don't really know any other the players too well because you know, even though I do follow like particular players on the G League, I don't really like follow like I don't know all of them. Obviously, I only have like a few that I really like. I like Gigi Jackson, um, Jay Scrub. Praise up to Jay Scrub. He got an ACL injury. Um, I like Sharif Cooper, and then now Imani Bates, he's open. <clears throat> and then, of course, some Clippers, some Clippers player, Xavier Moon, Messel Moon, um, what's his face? Uh, even Keaton Wallace, he's, I thought he was solid. Um, hopefully he gets rotation somewhere. Um, and then, even Jason Preston, he actually plays for the same team that Gigi Jackson plays for, so that, that's pretty interesting. But anyways, going back on to the vid, uh, Days, he did solid. Um, you know, he's a bucket, 25 points. Uh, he had two threes, seven rebounds, um, two assists, one steals, not bad. Uh, Samuels Jr., he was like pretty much the star of the game. I I was I never really heard of him before, but apparently he's like 25 years old. Um, I think he was undrafted last year, I, I believe. I don't know, but... But I did some more uh, research on him. Came from Villanova. Um, he looked pretty solid. Um, he, he got to the to the proper spots to get like you know the the passes, and then you know he, he looked pretty fluid. Seven rebounds, one steals, one assist, almost a forty points. He did better than my boy Gigi Jackson. So good stuff to him. Um, I mean yeah, that he's tw- he's twenty five years old, but still pretty impressive. Um, like I said, there are a decent amount of people in the G League that should be getting rotational minutes at times. That's just my opinion. Um, Hinton, he got, um, 14 rebounds. That's crazy for a, a point guard. Um, 11 assists, so he got a triple-double. Shout out to him. Um, Jalen LeCue, um, five, five assists, three rebounds, eight points. Um, the bench, I don't really know too much about them. Um, I know a little bit about Jerry Culver. Jerry Culver, I believe he was a high pick one time, but looks like it didn't work out well for him. Um, he had a pretty off game, G for 14. 13 rebounds, though, so that's solid. Um, but he did get six turnovers. Um, all the other players, um, they did their own part. Um, they either have a quiet game or they did their own little part. Um, nothing too noticeable. Oh, no, my bad. But now let's talk about the Memphis Hustles, a.k.a. my man, Gigi Jackson. My goodness. That man was killing it. He was killing it. <clears throat> um, the, first two, the first two quarters, this guy couldn't miss. I mean, he couldn't miss. He was so fluid with the ball. His ball handling skills is amazing, too. And his ball, if anything, his ball handling skills got way better. And then he's like even quicker. Um, when I saw him in South Carolina, um, he was he was like that too. But I don't know something about Gigi looked even better and better, and better. Non rebounds, three assists, one steals, three blocks. So it's not only that he's an offensive player, he's a two way player. Um, I have many comparisons of Gigi Jackson 
if you want to like do an objective comparison, you could say he's like a way better Rui Hachimura or a Danny Granger. I can I do see a lot of Danny Granger in Gigi Jackson because Danny Granger, he was a killer. He was a killer back in Indiana. Um, you know, I'm a younger fan, but I still remember like uh, Danny Granger's like his last four years. Like I, I I started like seeing a little bit of Danny Granger back in 2012 when it was like the Pacers versus the Heat. Um, he was pretty solid. He was a bucket. Um, could get rebounds. Good mentor for Paul George, and I do see that in Gigi Jackson. But if I'm being honest with you, I could even compare Gigi Jackson to like a Jason Tatum. A Jason Tatum makes with Hachimura because he has the Rui Hachimura ability to have a good take, like, you know, make a good layup and all that. But the way how he shoots, how fluid he shoots, Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum. Um, Playmaking, too. I could see it. Like, it's solid. It's very solid. And then um, I'm starting to pick up another comparison because – there are even moments when he was in the post and he still makes really tough shots. And that would be a Carmelo Anthony. Because um, Carmelo, he's more of a type of guy who's good in the post at times. Um, he would like do a post up and a fadeaway. Gigi Jackson, he kind of does a fadeaway. But his fadeaway looks more like Tatum more than Carmelo. But in the interior wise, I'm starting to see a little Carmelo. And because they're both the same size, except Gigi's way more slimmer. Um, but. Yeah, very amazing player. Basically, G. Jackson essentially kind of, like, I would say carried the team, but he was, like, the main star. Um, Matthew Hurt, um, he did, he was, like, the second best player of the game. Um, I thought he was solid in rebounding. Um, he, he does play pretty hard. Um, he managed to make some smart plays. He managed to get to the free throw line a lot. Um, he he's pretty solid in drawing fouls, so I thought he's pretty solid. Um, Johnson, I forgot, I don't know his first name. He did not look good whatsoever. With all due respect, um, no disrespect intended to him. I hope he has a better game. Um, but it was just not his best performance. Um, he was he was really bad in efficiency and in, in scoring, three for twelve, and six assists is okay, but. His turnover rates is so crazy. If had Jason Preston played, um, the Memphis Hustles would have probably won because Jason Preston, his playmaking is respectable. Um, actually pretty good. You know, when he was with the Clippers, he had some solid moments um, of you know, being a Clipper. He could play make, he could rebound, make smart play. Doesn't stand out, but he's not like you would say a liability and all that. Um, that, well, hopefully he could get rotational minutes somewhere. He's a solid player. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, arms, 7 for 15, 18 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists, 3 steals, 2 blocks. Solid, solid. Uh, Mulder, uh, he had, he hit two threes. Uh, nothing too much played his role. Um, and all, all the players on the bench, they just did the roles or didn't have anything that really stood out, but man, this feels good being, you know, a G.G. Jackson fan, I really rocked with him from the start, and now, he's going crazy, he's going to be a star, man, um, no reasons why G.G. Jackson should have fell to 45, but you know what, that's the best thing for for anyone who's who's, you know, a quote-unquote steal, because then they get drafted to, like, a team that has, like, a lot of vets and contender, and then the person becomes, you know, has early success and long-term success. Um, if a person is really good, and if and but he falls very low, that's usually the best thing for the player, in my opinion, because if you're really that good, and then you get to play with all the play if you get dropped, fell to a contender team like the Grizzlies um man like he's he could definitely learn a lot and Gigi Jackson is in a perfect environment because he's he's getting mentored by many players he he had mentored by Desmond Bain getting mentored by John Morant 
getting mentored by um, Steven Adams, getting mentored by Triple J. Like, you have so many guys mentoring him. And then his defense is starting to sh- – is definitely improving too. Um, and I could see that can – Jaron Jackson maybe could have gave him some tips and maybe that's where he's learning it from. He's going to be special. He's going to be special at the end of the day. Oh, man. He's definitely going to be pretty good. And and don't be surprised if the Grizzlies in 2025, they make a deep playoff run. Or even even so, I could see them going to the finals because the Grizzlies, they're having their off year. And nothing is better than having an off year. And then while you're content and you, while you still have, like, your stars and all that, just because he, he got suspended. Because when the Grizzlies get a high pick, oh, man. If they could draft it correctly, good luck. Good luck trying to go up against them. Because the Grizzlies, once the next season comes, once they become fully charged, and once they take the right prospect, they're going to be scary. And it's going to really be hard guarding them and going up against them. And and especially you add G.D. Jackson to that. Like, the Grizzlies basically got two top five picks, if I'm being honest with you. Because G.D. Jackson... He would have easily went top three, top three, had he not reclassified. And and then you know, assumingly the Grizzlies they're not doing good whatsoever. Clippers play them tomorrow, so tomorrow. Um, just a disclaimer: I don't think I'll really watch the game because the Chargers also play as well too, and the Chargers versus the Lions is kind of like more of an intense game, in my opinion. But I might flip channels and all that. But um, you know, hopefully Clippers would bounce back. But, um, but you know, Clippers should, in my opinion. But that's just a side note. But, but yeah, that's going to conclude the video. Um, definitely check out Gigi Jackson's uh, highlight tapes, and you know, let me know what you think about him. You think um, too many teams fumbled by passing up on him, or you think that you know um, Gigi Jackson's just having a good start, and then he might, you know. Um, have his moments, his humbling moments. I, I, I mean, Gigi Jackson, he's a beast. He's a beast. Of course, there was there will there will always still be moments when uh, Gigi Jackson has an off game because he has those games. He has a game when he goes crazy. Then you know later on, like the next two three games, he might have an off game. But that's just part of him being only 18 years old. Um, but anyways, that's definitely end the video. Um, have a good Saturday or Sunday whenever you're watching this, and take care. Peace.